Hi, my name is Mike Montgomery, and today I'm going to be building my very first ever Live Edge Slab Coffee Table on Modern Builds. So, obviously, this is a project that is very specific to the materials that you have. So hopefully what this video will be is kind of a guideline that you can follow along with if you want to do something similar and make something that is completely your own. So this project begins with two pretty weathered walnut slabs and the first thing I have to do is cut a straight edge on each of them so that I can join them together. And because the slabs were actually thicker than my circular saw could cut, I had to use a reciprocating saw to cut the rest. Now this left an ugly edge so I had to make up this jig so that I could flatten everything out so that they were 90 degrees. Now I know that there are some electric hand planes that actually have a 90 degree fence on them, but I don't have one, so I had to do this. Now because this uses sandpaper, it's not the fastest way to do it, but if you stay at it long enough, it will work and you will get square edges. And now that I did have two square edges, I cleaned up the faces a little bit and marked and cut slots for my biscuits. This is gonna add a lot more strength in the glue joints as well as help everything line up better when I put it in the clamps. And while that glue was drying, I mixed up some epoxy and filled in every crack or slit in the wood that I could find. This does two things. One, it just makes it look cleaner, makes it look nicer. And two, it keeps those cracks from getting bigger. A lot of people use butterflies or bow ties for this as well, but I just think epoxy looks better in this instance. And now with that glue and epoxy dry, it was time to flatten the slab. And there's really no easy way to say how to do this. Basically, you get a straight edge and you take down any high points. First with the hand plane and then with a belt sander. I use the hand planer to take down any of the really high points. And then any of the smaller, more subtle things that I had to do, I use the belt sander for that because it's not as aggressive. And once you flatten the top, all you got to do is flip it over and flatten the bottom as well. And once it was, I needed to square off the slab. This was actually really easy to do because I had a seam going down the middle of the board where I book matched the two slabs. So I actually already had my reference for square, and so all I had to do was cut it. And once I had everything cut with a circular saw, I went back through with a sawzall and cut all the way through it. And once I took the time to clean up all of those edges, it was time to work on the slab that I'm using for the legs. Now this one is a little bit thinner and not nearly as big, although it could probably stand as a coffee table on its own. And so unlike my tabletop, I actually had to make my own reference for square on this slab. So I marked a bunch of different points, and then I kind of found the median and marked a line through that. And with that being made, I could mark all of my lines that I'd need to be cut from there. And once I would marked my two edges, all I did was find my center point and mark a line, and that would be the first thing that I cut. And once I had it cut into two slabs, then I could cut my legs to length. And if you're gonna be doing this with a circular saw like I am, I cannot recommend a straight edge more. I would almost say it is 100% necessary. And because I already had most of the slab flattened when it was in one big piece, most of what I'm doing here is sanding for aesthetic as well as sanding down epoxy. And I was surprised to find that the belt sander actually works great sanding the edges of the slabs. Because of the radius that the belt sander has, it works really good at getting into all of the nooks and crannies. And I decided to do all of the sanding on the legs before I attached it to the tabletop. I thought this would be a lot easier than having to work around it. First with 80 grit, then 120, 150, and then my first 220 grit sanding. Now between these 220 grits, I wet sanded. And basically what this does is raise the fibers naturally that would come up by putting on a finish so you can sand them down now. And I did a wet sand twice. Then finally, I did a 320 grit and I called that good. And now I moved back to my tabletop and I plotted the points where I'd be putting dowels for my leg. And I punched each cross point before I drilled it. That way, my bit wouldn't wander on me. And I'm using a one inch Forstner bit with a one inch dowel on each point. After I had my holes drilled and my dowels fitting, I outlined my slab and then I used a router to cut a recess into the table bottom. This is gonna make it a little bit stronger, but really it's just gonna make it look a lot nicer, like it's a lot higher end piece than just butting it up with dowels. And as you can see, because I drilled all the holes by hand without a press, only three of the dowels fit on each of the legs, but this is plenty strong and it's gonna add plenty of support, nothing I need to worry about. And all I had to do was square up the legs and clamp it up. 
And any gap that I had between the leg and the recess, I filled those in with walnut wedges and that made it look really tight and really clean. And after I had the bottom sanded, I flipped it over and finished sanded the top, the same way that I did the legs. The finish I decided to go with is a natural Danish oil. And Danish oil is cool because unlike a polyurethane that sits on top of the wood, it actually soaks into the wood and then hardens. So that whenever you actually touch the table, you'll be feeling the wood and not the finish. And once the finish was dry, I was done. Now I really like the way this table turned out and I really love how there's half live edge while the corners are still squared off. This really adds a modern edge to what would have been a rustic table. So this really makes the table fit in a lot of different spaces and a lot of different designs. So that's really all there is to it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. That lets me know what you like and maybe what you'll want to see next. And speaking of next, my project video next week is going to be another live edge table. But unlike this, which is a slab, it's actually going to be a cross section. So it's going to be something totally different and something awesome. If this is your first time here, I want to say welcome and subscribe because I put out a new project video every week and you'll definitely want to stick around to check those out. And if you want to see what I'm up to throughout the week, Instagram is the place to do that. That is my social media of choice and the one I'm definitely most active on. If you got any questions, don't forget to leave those below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Otherwise, we'll see you next week on Modern Builds.